you very much for doing this, Michael. And um, I just want to explain if there's a loud noise in the back, it's because we're in the lab, which is Michael's native environment, so that's why we're here. So it's really great to talk to you. Thank you, Ruth. Um, can you tell us uh, why you decided to study chemistry? Um, why did I decide to become chemistry? Well, I essentially decided I didn't want to be a lawyer. Um, I started out in university doing a science law degree. After two years of law, I decided that law really wasn't for me, and I decided that science was the way to go, and I really enjoyed the experimental nature of chemistry. It probably even goes back a little bit before that. Um, in high school, I really liked chemistry, so much so that my grade 10 science teacher, uh, Mr. Neville Bean, um, actually said on the last day of school that he, he'd like to come and see my lab one day. So at the age of 15, when I was 15, he knew I was going to be a scientist before I did. Isn't that amazing, the difference of teaching? It's awesome so. how much of, and, and I was taught in regional Tasmania, and, and that's where we don't necessarily have good teachers all the time. So having an, an inspiring teacher was you know, one of the reasons I'm here today. That's fantastic. So what's your position and what do you do? In your so I'm an ARC Future Fellow, um, and that means that I'm one of the lucky individuals that is funded by the Australian Research Council to do experimental research. Um, so that's what I should be doing. Um, I've been a Research Fellow for about 14 years now, and that's where I started, was in the lab in my native environment doing chemistry experiments. Now I generally, I'm not here, I'm in my office um, talking to my students working on paper drafts, writing grants to get money. Um, we run a group of anywhere between about 15 to 20 people at any time of the year. So I don't do the hands-on stuff anymore. I get to do my science and my experiments by helping other people do that. Yeah, so you're a management overseeing. Yeah, I'm, I'm middle management, I guess. Oh, those brains can run. I, I'm technically, used to te technically incompetent and not useful anymore. So, <laughs> so what do you enjoy most about that? Um, so the, the bit that I enjoy most now is that I get to, on a pretty regular basis, talk um, and develop a relationship with you know 15 or 20 individuals over a three or four year period um, and get to help them come in as people who have ideas of what a PhD means and what chemical research is um, and then to help them understand that what they thought probably wasn't right and after four years they change the way they think and they develop into a, an independent academic researcher that can, can take questions and, and design experiments and interpret the results and go through that scientific process. Yeah, fantastic. So, that growth. So, um, it's, it's a silly question, but it's a question I'm asking everyone. How did chemistry help you get into this area? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a chemistry academic. Um, if, if I didn't have chemistry, I wouldn't be an academic in chemistry. That, that's what I'm saying. But it goes back to, you know, perhaps even earlier than a high school, I think my brother bought me a a salt battery car um, when I was probably in a primary school. So, so it was a, a it was a battery operated car, but it ran on the electrolysis of salt. Oh, wow. um, and I think that generally inspired me to think about science and how wearables make it cool. Um, and then through that, I was a a, a, a long distance member of the the CSIRO um, club. Well, I can't yeah, remember yeah. what it's called now. Right. Uh, my daughter's a member. I can't remember what it is. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then and again, you know that that science equation. So I think that the science and chemistry has always been a part of the whole. So you were headed headed this way from a very young age. I think it took me a long time to figure out that's where I was headed, but I think yeah, anyone can see that's where I was going. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so what advice would you give to other people who wanted to become an academic in chemistry? Uh, to become an academic in chemistry, you really have to be thick-skinned. Um, if your papers are not getting rejected, you're not trying hard enough. So rejection is a is a natural and necessary part of what we do. That peer review process is absolutely critical to keep us performing to the best possible science that we probably can do. You just have to not take that personally and and, and deal with the, the review comments in the spirit in which they're given. Um, you have to be passionate about what you do. Academics work long hours with little recognition in most instances and, and very little compensation for the hours that they work. So you really have to be passionate about what you want to do and why you want to do that. The reason that I do that is because of the creativity and the flexibility I have in my job and if I get sick of doing that type of research I can just do something else. Yeah, yeah. Um, and not many jobs have the opportunity for me to completely change what I do in six months. Yeah, so within this path, choose your own path. And, exactly yeah. right. It's like yeah. a choose your own adventure book where you get to write the adventure every day. Yeah, that's um, and there, there isn't many other jobs I know that do that. Even though most of my work is 
relatively mundane and routine work in office work and talking to people. It's the it's the big ideas and the creative stuff and oh, what if we do that? Can we do that? Um, those kind of things that I can ask. Fantastic, fantastic. So how has the RACI membership been useful to you? So the, about the best thing that I have got out of the RACI is the, the networks and the links around the country and that started from when I was a PhD student at the RACI R&D topics meeting and as an honest student um, I, I attended that and made some, uh, some met some friends and some colleagues and we are still friends and colleagues you know 20 years on um, and so particularly in a, in a country like Australia that's disparate from the rest of the world that um, and you know we're not a big population but we're a large country so we're dislocated having those contacts with people and networks around the country and then through them around the world is really critical to us being internationally competitive science. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Ruth.